morning, church. Okay. So we continue in uh, Romans four, um, 15, verse 18. Romans chapter 15, verse 18. This is the word of God. For I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me to bring the Gentiles to obedience by word and deed, by the power of signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem all the way around to Illyricum, I have fulfilled the ministry of the gospel of Christ. And thus I make it my ambition to preach the gospel, not where Christ has already been named, lest I build on someone else's foundation, but as it is written, those who have never been told of him will see, and those who have never heard will understand. You may be seated. So, um, last week we saw that uh, Paul just said that in Christ he has a reason to be proud of his work um, for God. But here Paul uh, deflects all the glory. There's no boasting in ourselves. Because he says that Christ is the one who accomplished, and he did that by the power of the Spirit. And yet, it's through Paul. So, we see here that the human factor, his personal hard work, is not irrelevant. In the same way, Paul can say, and this is not a complete list, but he can say in Colossians, I toil, struggling with all his energy that he powerfully works within me. Or in 1 Corinthians, I work harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. What is the goal of this work? It's the obedience of the nations. That is the obedience of faith, just like he said in Romans 1, and he will say then um, in chapter 16 at the end of the book. So this is perfectly consistent with the great commission given by the Lord Jesus at the end of uh, Matthew. Um, he says that from Jerusalem all the way to Illyricum, that would be um, modern-day Albania or uh, northern Greece. So it's a pretty amazing statement because he says that he has fulfilled the ministry of the gospel. Um, how can he say that? Also, I'm going to, like, a little spoiler from next week, but he's going to say that he has no longer any work to do. And so how can he say that? There, there were for sure many other people who had um, not heard the gospel. This is because he sees himself as the apostle to those who have never heard. And he quotes from Isaiah 52, which I think is also interesting because that's the passage of the suffering servant. Um, so Paul says that that's his uh, holy ambition, we could say. That is different, a different work from um, a local pastor of a local church working in their area. Uh, Paul would evangelize and then establish churches and then let the work be done by the pastors there. So the question is, what is our holy ambition? And in some way this is relatable, what Paul is saying, because he doesn't get it from a vision from the sky, even if that was his conversion, but he gets it from Scripture. He's, he gets his personal mission from Isaiah 52. So I want us to think about this. What is speaking to us from the scriptures, the area of work in this world that totally captures our attention and we're not able to ignore? Let's discover it and let's embrace it. We all have a role to play. Let's work harder than anyone else, knowing that it's Christ, his power, his grace, his gospel at work through us. We don't do it for our own fame and glory so that at the end of our lives, we will be able to look back and be proud, have a reason to be proud in Christ of our work for God. Lift up your hearts. <laughs> 